YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and this is the third in my North Korean crisis series. It somehow turned into a series. I thought video one was enough. Kind of just, video one was all about North Korea wants to keep on trucking with their nuke program. Trump administration says this shit won't stand, man, and China really can't do much anything about it. I just said in the first video that people should take it seriously, uh, that <coughs> uh, North Korea is a, a, an adversary that we should, shouldn't uh, underestimate. Uh, and uh, just uh, keep your eye on it, see where things are going. One of the places where people thought things were going was that they thought it was headed towards, uh, like there was a birthday for the, the god king of North Korea, the grandfather of the current leader, uh, and people thought that North Korea was going to start a nuclear war that day. Um, so I made video number two suggesting that I thought it was really unlikely the North Koreans have nothing to gain by launching that kind of an attack. Like I said, they want to keep the status quo, keep on trucking. Uh, so I just thought that was an unfounded fear. The day went by. The day was the day of the sun, by the way. That was another thing. I'm, I'm light on, on that kind of trivial detail. Uh, a lot of people in the comments were saying, dude, you sound so stupid and uninformed. Uh, you know, I, I can say the word Kim Jong-un, and I can say Kim Jong-il, and I can say Kim Il-sung, and it was the Day of the Sun celebration, and up, upcoming is April 25th military celebration, and I can hit you with a bunch of factoids and dates and things like that, but the, the dates don't really matter. What matters is whether or not the powers that be are going to decide to, to create a war, and wars are not usually fought for the reasons that people say that they're fighting them for. Now is your opportunity to write libtard in the comment section below. Uh, <laughs> or conspiracy theorist, uh, theorist or whatever. Um, but uh, the individual facts really don't matter because if people decide they're going to do their war, uh, unless the populace really gets upset about it and stops them in one way or the other, they're going to do their war. And it doesn't matter whether there's a Day of the Sun celebration or a military parade or whatever. Um, they're going to get their war one way or the other. So I don't worry so much about the dates. I don't sweat the dates. And the North Koreans have absolutely no incentive to to start anything. They want the status quo. They want to keep it going. If they did start something, or it seemed like they started something, I would be highly skeptical that it would be a false flag attack created by some other state player and to blame the North Koreans for starting the war that they would like to begin themselves. Um, why am I doing this video? The reason I'm doing this video is that uh, one of the other big things in the comments section was just how easy this war is going to be. We're just, they're launching missiles from the back of Model, 4, uh, Model T Ford trucks. One of the comments said that. And they misspelled the word there. Well, they used the wrong there. They misspelled missiles. Uh, misspelled another word. I th they might have misspelled trucks. <laughs> um, I don't know whether they meant it hyperbolically or literally. Um, but there were a lot of comments like that. Just how easy this war is going to be. We'll be in. We'll be out. You know, we just we've got so many nukes. We just nuke the whole country. Uh, I think some civilians live there too. Kids, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but that was a big comment. Uh, uh, theme, uh, that it's just going to be such an easy war. And I don't think that's true at all. Uh, North Korea is ready for that kind of war. Uh, they've got hundreds, if not thousands, of these tunnels and bunkers and things. Uh, their, their, their hardware is all dug in. It's ready for that. Now, I'm not saying we wouldn't do damage. Most of the damage would be civilians. Um, certainly there would be damage done, but if we go into North Korea, and by we, I mean the United States, because I'm a United States citizen, uh, if we go in, the purpose is going to almost certainly be regime change. That's what it always is. We are a friend to the North Korean people. We just want regime change. Um, and it's going to be a cakewalk, they say. Like they said for Afghanistan and Iraq. You know, we'll be in and out. Two months. Bang. Done. Um, there's, two, there's a couple ways you can go, you can go in. And I, they almost certainly would start with air bombardment. And like I said, North Korea is ready for that. They're dug in. We're not going to decapitate them that way. We're going to have to put troops in on the ground in that kind of country. And by country, I mean landscape. Uh, with an enemy, I hate using the word enemy, with an adversary uh, that's ready for that kind of thing. There'd be an enormous amount of uh, loss, uh, for, well, obviously for the North Koreans, but also for the, the U.S. troops, enormous losses. I don't, I don't, I don't think people have, have seen the kind of losses in a long time that we would be seeing if we actually invaded that country. Uh, on foot and went in that way. Um, but what would the results be uh, of an invasion? Obviously, you know, I, I just talked about it, that I think it uh, would be difficult to do it with any way other than ground troops. 
uh, the results uh, almost certainly initially would be a, a, a counterattack or retaliatory attack on South Korea and possibly Japan, anybody else that uh, uh, the North Koreans would see as uh, being allies to the United States. Uh, innocent people there, lots of innocent people, thousands, thousands, maybe more get killed depending if they, you know, depending on what kind of weapons, uh, you know, get used in that, uh, uh, in that, in that retaliatory strike. Uh, there's the, the, the U.S. homeland could be struck. I, I said in the, in the first video, while a lot of people are in this, they're firing missiles from Model T trucks mindset, the North Koreans have flown satellites over the United States. They can get stuff up over the air. If they can get something, uh, they can carry a nuclear weapon up over the United States. They don't have to target anything specifically. They can blow it up, create an EMP pulse, and millions of people would die from that. Very dangerous. And if, even barring the EMP idea that they have to get something up in the air, which is still a bit of a challenge for them, they have a massive subfleet. They could have something sitting off of the coast of California right now. I have no evidence or reason to believe that. It's just pure speculation. But they have submarines. They have nuclear weapons. Like Reese's peanut butter cups, chocolate and peanut butter, they go so well together. But they have ways of reaching out to the United States homeland. Millions of people could die that way. Um, and then there are the troops on the ground in North Korea, you know, our kids that we send over there. Um, I mentioned earlier that I didn't think there was a big incentive, there was a big disincentive for the North Koreans to ever use their nuclear weapons uh, in an offensive way. But that disincentive gets taken away the moment that there is an active attempt for regime change. They've got nothing to lose at that point. Uh, and they, for all the, the troops that are on North Korean soil, the whole issue of delivery systems of their nuclear weapons becomes moot because we, we brought ourselves right there to their doorstep and thousands and thousands of U.S. troops could be vaporized in a moment along with all the hardware, ships, planes, all the rest because the nukes are right there. They don't have to, they don't have to launch them anywhere because you know, we walked right up, walked right up into them. Um, I don't know that Americans are ready for that kind of thing. I mean, when is the last time you, you drove around for like a week straight and didn't see any flags at half-mast? You know, the littlest thing happens. I don't mean the littlest thing. I mean, it's when someone dies, people with flags at half-mast. And it's terrible and it's tragic for the, the, the family, but Americans have become so thin-skinned to that kind of loss. And, it, and, and in a way, that's a good thing. It's, it's good that we are able to be shocked still when we, we lose even, you know, one person. That's a good thing. But it also makes us completely unprepared for the kind of loss that we would be facing if we did an actual invasion of North Korea. Well, what's the end game? What is our end game? And I think what our end game ends up being because of that uh, is that the United States just gets tired of the bloodletting because it would be incredibly bloody. Uh, and, you know, the, the U.S. will end up declaring victory in some way, you know, we'll take some hill or, you know, kill someone who's, you know, second in command or, or something and say, it's done, we did it, and, and we'll declare victory and, and then and leave. But the problem won't be solved. The, 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 the regime will still be there. Uh, they'll, and, uh, and we'll be kind of back to square one, except that our allies will be South Korea and Japan, who just got pummeled because of us. Uh, you know, an even stronger China, and I told you so China, at that point. It seems like we'll be back to square one, but with less political capital at that point. So, anyway. I just wanted to respond to the cavalier nature of a lot of the comments about how easy, how breathtakingly easy this whole thing is going to be. I hope that we find another way around it, because I don't think it's going to be very functional. I don't think it'll accomplish anything. Because just, just because something hurts, just because something costs you a lot, even if it's live, doesn't mean it's not worth doing. We had the American Revolution. A lot of people died in that. Civil War, too. I'm from the North. We won. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I know the Civil War wasn't completely about getting rid of slavery, but that was a, a little fringe benefit of it. And even though a lot of people died in it, something good came out of it. You know, so there's an argument for that. But I don't see the silver lining of a North Korea invasion, and I think that it would be incredibly bloody. And a lot of people that are alive right now, maybe that are watching this video, might not be alive in a year from now, depending on what decisions get made. And those decisions have nothing to do with Day of the Sun celebrations or April 26th 
or any of those little pieces of minutia that just get thrown around. So we'll see. <laughs> keep your eye on it, keep prepping. If it's your, your thing, contact your congressperson, tell them what you think about all this. Because uh, when the public turns on stuff, they do, uh, they do have the ability to uh, have an impact sometimes. We've seen that a couple times recently. It's hard, but it might be worth doing. That's it. Keep prepping. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.